everyone welcome to this java on azure series in this series we will develop java and spring boot applications which can use cloud offerings and for the cloud offerings for this series we will consider azure and we will also develop the applications that can run on azure cloud and to achieve all this we will take baby steps so we will develop a very simple spring boot application and then we will gradually add more features to it so let's see what we are going to cover in this video which is the first of the series the agenda of this video is to develop a Spring Boot service that will have its own database RDBMS which is MySQL in this case and we have developed such services in the past. The difference is in this case the MySQL will be hosted on Azure. So we won't have to set up MySQL on our local system. We don't have to run any Docker container. We will use Azure to have a fully managed MySQL instance. So the database will be running on Azure Cloud and then we will develop this Spring Boot application and set up the database connectivity. So that the Spring Boot application can talk to this MySQL which is running on Azure Cloud. Talking about the prerequisites, you should have the basic knowledge of Spring Boot and Spring Boot APIs. If you are just starting, you can refer this playlist or just follow along. And the second thing we need is an Azure account. We need an Azure account in order to create Azure resources on the cloud. A free account would suffice that I will be using for this video. So what are the steps? What are we going to do? First of all, we will set up an Azure MySQL database running on Azure Cloud. The second step is we will develop the Spring Boot application and then we will establish the database connectivity between this application and the Azure MySQL database. So let's get started. The first step is to set up the Azure MySQL database. To do that, we need to use Azure portal. To use the Azure portal, you need to go to this URL and it will ask for a sign up. You need to create a new account. It asks for your credit card information, but you will not be charged during your free trial. And if let's say the trial expires and you choose to upgrade the account in that case you will be charged as per what you use because of this pay as you go model and as you can see this is my free trial account so first of all everything in azure is a resource so no matter you are creating a database or an event hub or a virtual machine a storage account everything is a resource so in order to set up a new azure mysql database we need to first of all create a resource and here you can find all the resources you can even search for it so if i go back to my home directory I can also find it here as your database for MySQL and this is the one that we need. So if you go to this one, we need to create a new flexible server which is a fully managed MySQL database. So let's create that and now we need to fill up the form and provide all the required information. The first thing is resource group and as the name suggests, it is a group of related resources. So let's create a new one and let's name it Java on Azure. You can name it anything. It's used for grouping purposes. And let's enter the server name. So let's say we are creating a MySQL database to store the books information. So we can say book MySQL server. All right. Then the region MySQL version and here workload type. So this is for development or hobby projects. Okay. Availability zone. You don't need to select really. And then the authentication method. So I'm going to use simple username and password, which is the MySQL authentication only. So I can say book admin and then you need to select a password. All right. Go to the next step. So the connectivity method would be public access. Then we need to open the firewall. The easiest way is to add the current client IP address. So I'm going to add mine and this will enable or open the firewall rule. And hit next. So here we don't really need to change anything. Next, we don't need to add any tag here. Review and create and simply hit create. This will now create a new MySQL flexible server which could take a couple of minutes. So I'll come back when this is up and running. So the deployment is now complete. That means the MySQL flexible server is now created. So let's go to the resource. And here you can find all the required details like the resource group, the location, the server name, the admin name and many more things from this panel. What we need to do is we need to go to the databases and we need to add a new database. So let's name it bookdb. Save. And it will now create a new MySQL database bookdb. We can see the newly created database here bookdb. All right. The next step is how to connect to this database. We need a connection string or some parameters, some configurations that we can use like the host name or the connection string, the URL, username and password. So we can go to the connect tab here and here we can find the connection details like this is the host name, the username that we need to use, the password that we created 
and you can find other details like how to connect from browser or locally if you have the mysql workbench you can connect to this database using mysql workbench how to import and export data so there we can find the useful commands and similarly how to connect from your app so here we can find the sample or let's say jdbc connection so this is the url that we need to use all right so we can use these details to connect to this database now that we have the database the next step is to create some tables that we can use when we develop the application so how do we create the tables well we can use the mysql workbench and provide the connection parameters and then use the workbench to trigger the mysql commands or we can also use something called azure cloud shell that is here in the browser itself and we can trigger the commands from here and we can use uh, this connection string which says connect from browser or locally so let's use the azure cloud shell and this will now create a new storage if we don't have one already okay so after creating the storage account we are connected to this azure cloud shell the next step is to connect to this mysql database to do that we can simply use this command let's copy it and paste it here hit enter it will ask for the password all right and it seems we are facing some problems with the login and it could be some networking issue so let's try that again let's kill it first and go to the networking and let's also allow this one public access from any azure service within azure to this server so let's allow it and add this one all right and save it all right so it's added now and notice we added allow all we could have added this one at current client ip address only but for now let's move ahead and let's retry and now we are connected so once we are connected to this mysql server let's use the database that we created which was bookdb yeah use bookdb and we will add a new table to this database let me copy the mysql commands to create the table and here it is here we are creating a table named books and this is the table structure we have an id we have the title author details let's hit enter and it will create a new table and we can check this select star from table name books which is empty right now so we have successfully created a mysql server then we created a mysql database bookdb and in this database we have an empty table right now the next step is to create the spring boot api add the correct dependencies and then setting up the connectivity with this azure mysql database so let's move on so how do we create the spring boot api or spring boot service we start with spring initializer so it will be a maven project and let's name it artifact so this is going to be a book service all right and change the package name now we need to add the dependencies so first of all we'll use spring web then we need to add mysql and next is azure so out of these microsoft azure dependencies we need this one azure support which is auto configuration for azure services all right so let's generate the project and open it in intellij so here we have extracted the project and let's open it with intellij it has now downloaded all the required dependencies before we check out the pom.xml uh, there is one more step that you need to do first of all i'm using intellij and the second thing is you need this azure development toolkit so i will share the link in the description it's a very simple step installation step if you follow those steps you will be able to integrate that azure development toolkit with your uh, ide it could be intellij eclipse or vs code whatever it is and once you have installed the toolkit and once you logged in you will see this view as your explorer and here you can find all the details basically resources different resources while this is loading let's check other resources so here in the azure segment you can find many azure resources like azure mysql database which we created it's still loading but here we will find the same resource while it's still loading let's move on and we'll come back to that so let's check out the pom.xml as you can see it was a login issue that's why we were not able to see the details from the toolkit so it is asking me to log in again let me do that quickly
this is my subscription select and i hope we are back so let's go to the azure explorer and expand the resource group and now you see the resource group that we created java on azure and if we expand this section in the mysql section we see the server that we created so it becomes easy and it simplifies many more things that you will see when we develop the application so coming back to the pom.xml here we see the required dependencies like spring boot starter web spring cloud azure starter and this is the main dependency spring cloud azure starter jdbc mysql so same as spring jdbc dependencies we have azure specific dependencies so this will enable us to set up the connectivity between the application and the azure mysql database using spring jdbc in addition to this we also have this mysql connector j dependency which is the mysql connector uh, we cannot establish the connectivity without this connector and notice the dependency management section now we have the spring cloud azure dependencies bomb which is slightly different uh, from a simple spring boot application so now that we have all the required dependencies let's move on provide the database configuration in application.properties while write the controller and let's see how it works so to provide the database connection parameters we know we have to provide the details in application.properties file so let's go to application.properties file the first thing we will do we will assign a random port because in future we will create different applications and we need separate ports for all these applications so let's do that and then we will provide the database connection parameters so we know we use property like spring.datasource.url.username and password but notice as soon as I type spring dot, it is giving me suggestions like what do you want to use as your database for MySQL or as a database for Postgres or Cosmos DB. And how is it happening? Because we have the toolkit installed in IntelliJ, that's how it's giving me the suggestion. And we have as your database for MySQL in this case. We can simply select this one and now it will ask for the details. And it already has the details like the subscription is a free trial this is the server this is the database all we need to do is i need to provide my password so let me do that you will provide your own admin username password that you created okay and you can also see the jdbc url we can also find the same database connection parameters here uh, in the connect section connect from your app here for the jdbc and we see this similar url here jdbc url all right we can also test the connection if we do that we see the connected successfully hit ok and notice how it looks different from what we generally do so when we generally set up a code base and provide the connection parameters we hard code the url the username and password but here we don't see the values hard coded in the application.properties file which is a good thing we should not hard code the application properties in the application we should use placeholders or environment variables and that's what this toolkit is doing it is creating a connection binding where can we see the values of these placeholders so notice in the project structure we now have a folder named azure and here if we go to the resource connection we see a connection binding for azure database for mysql which is the same server that we created the database and environment variables so this toolkit has automatically created three environment variables if you don't have the toolkit you can directly provide the values in the application.properties file so we have the required properties we have the required configuration now let's move on create a new controller so we'll create a new package and in this package we'll create a new controller let's name it book controller we know how to create a rest controller like this in the book controller we will expose an endpoint to create the book that will be the post endpoint so let's do that public and ping add book and this is going to be a post mapping okay and we also need to add a request body annotation book book we need this model this is something that we will create in a second and when we receive the create book request uh, we will have a repository that will ultimately store the data in the database so let's create the repository as well or let's first create the model 
so rename it book and uh, it will have four properties the same properties which we defined in the database so let's go back to the terminal here we have id title author and details so let me define the properties private long id private string title author details and we need to add the constructor as well so let's define a no argument constructor let's also define all fields constructor and getters and setters equals and hash code and the last one two string two string is only required let's say if we have to like print the object somewhere so we have the model next we need to map this model to the database table so that we can work with the repository and spring data project and we know how to do that we can use at the red table annotation because in this case the name of the model or name of the class which is book is different from the name of the table so if we go the name of the table is books and in order to correctly map these two entities we need to add at the red table annotation and we can define the correct table name and second we have to use at the red id annotation to define that this id is the primary key basically so let's do that let's use at the red table annotation but we don't find it because we have a dependency missing so let's go back to form.xml and along with this start a jdbc mysql which is for azure we need to add another dependency which is the plain spring data jdbc so let's do that uh, spring hyphen boot and uh, start a data jdbc this is the one and this is coming from boot and uh, let's reload the project so this has been downloaded now and let's now use the table annotation which is coming from relational core mapping and we will provide the table name which is books and the next step is to add at the rate id annotation like this and that's it we don't need to do anything for this example to enhance the model we already have everything let's go to the controller import the correct model which is coming from main model now let's add the repository as well so we'll add a new package and in this package we'll add a new interface book repository And this repository will extend simple CRUD repository. All right, and it requires two type parameters. The first one is model, which is sorry book in this case, and the second is the data type of your primary key, which is long. And we can find it here. This is the data type of the primary key, so that's the second type parameter. And the first one is the entity or the model and that's it we don't need to write any crud operation here everything will be extended or inherited from the crud repository and spring boot or spring framework will generate the required code automatically if you're not familiar with how to use the repository please check out this video so we have the model which is the book class and the book repository we now need to enhance the book controller to work with the repository in order to save the book data so let's do that consider we receive a request a post request in which we get the book information like the title and the author and the details we don't need to provide the id because that will be auto generated so what do we need we need the repository here so let's auto wire it book repository and once we have the book repository we can simply call the save method by passing the book that's it 
Calling the save method on the repository will save the book entity which will ultimately insert the data in the database, the database which is running on Azure Cloud. What more we can do uh, if you notice this save method returns the entity back but this time we get more information like the ID of the book because that object is coming after inserting the data. So we can use that data to create the response because we have to return a response right right now we are returning a string so let's do that we can save this object as save book and uh, to return the response we can use response entity dot okay and here we can generate or create a response like this so we can use book with id was created successfully that's going to be a response we need to pass the id so let's quickly do that save book dot get id so that's the response we need to change the return type okay so let's quickly revisit everything that we did we have a book controller and this book controller is exposing an endpoint which is post mapping that means it will handle the post requests and in this request we are getting some data in the form of request body and we are mapping that data to this book entity this book is mapped uh, with this table books and we know that id is auto generated all right and then we have the repository so when the book controller receives a request it will use the repository to save this entity to save the data in the database table so let's start the service now and see if we can insert the data in the database And as you can see, the server started fine. We see it started the application and notice the random port which is assigned automatically to this application. And one more thing that the connection and the authentication, basically the binding between the application and Azure is automatically handled by Spring Boot depending on the dependencies that we have added. And you can see it here. It will configure the default credential of type default Azure credential. Now that the server is up, we need to make a call to this endpoint and notice it is a post mapping that means it must be a post request to trigger a post request i will use postman and here i have the data ready i just need to change the port and this is the json document or the body that i'm going to submit so we need to pass the title author and details of the book so let me copy the port here and we have the JSON body which will be mapped to the book entity and let's send the request and we've got the response that book with id1 was created successfully so earlier this table was empty but now if we trigger the select star we see a record successfully got added to this table so that means when we triggered a post call to the api it successfully inserted the data to this database which is running on azure cloud we successfully inserted the record in this table and how do we read the data back well it's simple we already have the database connectivity in place we just need to use the appropriate method of the repository to read the data from this table and by repository i mean basically this book repository which is extending cred repository and we know how to do that for the sake of completeness let's add a new endpoint to read the records from this table so we'll go to the book controller and uh, we will add a new method here for now let's put the return type as wide and this method will return all the records from the database table so we don't need to accept any filter criteria or any sorting criteria the important thing is we need to use the get mapping annotation because that's going to be a get call all right and uh, we can say book repository dot find all let's change the return type okay we are now exposing a new endpoint to support http get call so when a client makes an http call this method will be invoked and the repository will read all the data from that table which is running on azure cloud and all those records basically the objects of book class will be returned as response so let me restart the application the service is up the port is different this time because it's being automatically assigned a random port so let's copy this port go to the postman uh, add a new tab 
insert the address so that's going to be localhost colon the new port and it's going to be a get call we don't need to provide any other parameters so let's simply send the request and we see the record from the table so the table right now has a single entry and so we see a single record let's add a new one before that let's change the port as well here and uh, let's add another record and we see book with id 2 was created successfully we can test it if we send another get request we should see two records and we see two records let's go to the browser as well and trigger the select star and we see two records in the database so we successfully established the connectivity between the spring boot application and the mysql database which is basically azure mysql database running on azure cloud and if we check the code notice it's almost same what we generally do when we use spring data project and spring boot there are no special changes in book controller or the repository and in the book controller as well we have the post mapping and get mapping that's it and similarly there are no major changes in the application dot properties whenever we want to set up a database connectivity we have to provide these properties the only difference is in this case as your toolkit created this connection binding and it's using environment variables rather than hard coding the values directly in the properties file the values have been moved to environment variables and when we run the application those environment variables are passed automatically that's the only difference but nothing else it's just that we need to add the right set of dependencies and the abstractions provided by the spring framework in the form of spring data allow us to write some code that can talk to any database the only difference is instead of running the mysql database on the local system that database is running on azure cloud so that's it for this lecture see you in the next lecture thanks for watching